Well, welcome back, folks. Today's another big day for the Honda SL125 project. The painted bodywork is finished, otherwise known as the tins. And in a few minutes, we'll take them outside in the bright sunshine, and we'll go through them or over them in a little bit more detail. But before we get to that, I do have a confession to make, and that is that I did not paint these uh, pieces myself. My original intention all along coming into this was that I was going to do the work myself. But uh, as I started researching the paint and the process, uh, I decided to farm it out to a painter in northern Indiana that I've used before who does very good work. My rationalization for farming it out rather than doing it myself was, was really twofold. And the first is the materials, that is the paint, is quite expensive. Uh, cost me minimum with all the thinners and the reducers and you really buy like a kit of parts. Uh, you're talking somewhere around 300 US dollars, maybe even a little more. You can only buy it in quart sizes and I wouldn't need anywhere near a quart by the time we reduce it down I'd probably use less than half of that. So I'm going to have all this expensive paint left over that I'm not going to need when I was complete with the project. Now I know one could say, well why don't you just use it up and paint projects for other people, but I really don't want to get into painting um, bodywork for other folks. That would be an option I suppose, but that uh, it isn't something I'm interested in doing and that actually leads me to the second, which is the more uh, important point of the reason why I didn't paint this myself, which if I was to try to paint for someone else, this still would be a factor, the second uh, major consideration, which actually is the bigger of the two considerations here, and that is facilities. I really don't have a great place to paint uh, this kind of, these kind of parts. I have to do all my painting outside, and by definition it's exposed to the weather. Uh, I do not have a paint booth and on a fairly complex uh, project like this, and this is a candy color, which is considered one of the more challenging types of paint to apply, at least that's what my research tells me and talking to other people that have applied candies, that it's, it's a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, certainly that didn't intimidate me, but uh, one does have to use care when applying a candy uh, finish. Now, uh, uh, candy coat, there's really four levels of finish that are done, uh, that are applied to, to get the full depth of the color. And that is, you have your, your primer, your standard primer, you use a epoxy-based uh, or urethane epoxy primer. Then you would have a base coat, which for this color green would be either white or silver. Then you apply your color coat, that would be the green, and it's a translucent color, which means you have to build up the color with multiple coats till you reach the depth of color you're looking for and then it has to be top coated with a clear. And there's multiple layers of uh, coating, coats, of each one of those four layers and uh, spread across multiple days outside. Again, I have to do this outside early in the morning when it's quiet. So it's, it, by definition, it will be spread over multiple days, exposed to the weather, so I depend on having uh, satisfactory weather for multiple days in a row. And uh, I was just concerned that, you know, the circumstances were not going to work out for me. Uh, and by the way, there are six pieces that have to be painted total. So everything I just talked about is times six pieces, with scuffing in most cases in between. And I wasn't, I wasn't confident that those, those circumstances were going to come together for me, so I chose to, to farm it out. And so it was gone for about a month or so, uh, I think almost five weeks, four, four and a half, five weeks. And it came out beautiful, um, a little expensive of course, um, anytime you have this kind of painting work done you're going to pay for it. But that was the exchange I wanted to make to have a nice turnkey f finished uh, kit of parts to go on a bike rather than fussing around and the stress of trying to get it done outside in the environment and having contamination in the air and, and getting a string of days put together that uh, would work out for me. So that's why I made the decision to go the way I did. Contrast that, by the way, with the Yamaha Wild One, which is only uh, two, two coats, and that was the uh, primer. That was an epoxy uh, urethane primer. And then the top, the, that maroon or burgundy 
a Yamaha color. Um, that was a single stage enamel, which means there was no clear on. So I had less pieces to paint on the Yamaha, and uh, I only had two uh, coats. I had two coatings I had to apply. Uh, so I had much less complexity to deal with on the Yamaha than I would have had on this Honda. So that's, that's the story on the paint and why I did what I did. Let's go ahead and move outside and we'll take a look at the individual pieces in a little bit more detail. So here we are outside. I'm in front of the shop. I've got the sun over my right shoulder. There's just a little touch of breeze. It's mid-morning right now. I'm hoping I won't have too much wind noise in the audio portion. But you can see all six painted pieces laid out there on the table along with the new reproduction side cover badges right here along with the two restored fuel tank badges that I did in a previous video right there. We'll come back and talk about the side cover badges and how I'm going to apply those to that to those side covers uh, a bit later. I'll go inside to do that so I can get in more detail about those badges. The paint was matched to uh, a number of uh, projects that went through recent, recent meaning the last few years, auctions like Meekum's. The painter, uh, my painter indicated he did uh, contact the painters that had done some of those bikes to get information on the paint match, and I think it's beautiful. Now the reality is that uh, NOS parts back, even when these were new, varied a lot from batch to batch, so it's not unusual to see a bit of a variation in color. I've seen it myself when I've ordered NOS parts for comparison purposes and as far as I'm concerned he got it um, perfect. Um, it came out, I couldn't have hoped for it to come out any better than what it did. Again keep in mind those side covers were reproduction. Those are plastics. The fuel tank is the original. The headlight shell is not original to this bike but it is an original headlight shell for this model. And then the two fenders uh, were not the originals that came on the bike. The originals were uh, a little more damaged than what I wanted to deal with. The front was an NOS that was originally a silver. That was a brand new part. And then the rear was also silver, but it was used. And that was not an NOS part. The black stripe on the fuel tank, you can see right there, that's painted on and then clear coated. So that is underneath the clear coat. That is not... A decal or a sticker of any kind. In fact, I believe that's the way Honda originally did these uh, pieces. That is, that was painted on, not a, not a decal. Uh, again, I couldn't be any happier with the parts. I think they really look great in the sun. That's why I want to come out here and give you a little better shot at it. Let's see what they look like. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move back inside and we're going to talk about the side covers and the emblem. We're back over at the bench and I thought I'd share with you my thinking on how I'm going to lay out the hole pattern. I've got to drill two holes for these protrusions or studs on the back of the emblem, like you can see there, that will go through this cover. And you got to get it right the first time because you're drilling holes, so you don't want to screw this up. I've looked at a lot of photos online. Uh, at side covers and they're all over out there. You won't have any problem finding photos. The problem is that not all of these badges, at least in terms of restorations, particularly in terms of restorations, have been positioned correctly. It's not uncommon to find on the 1971 model, and by the way, 72 and on, they used a decal or a sticker and didn't use this emblem anymore. In the later models, they put that decal right in the middle of the side cover. The 71 models, which this is, of course, uses this emblem, and the, the emblem is not in the middle of the side cover. And how I know that is I went to Honda for uh, my primary reference eventually. And this is a period uh, piece of advertising. Those of you that have been with me for a while know that I like to collect uh, period correct advertising. Uh, this happens to be a dealer brochure that um, it goes with each of my projects that I restore. And if you look at where Honda has placed in this, uh, these photographs, the emblem right here and right here, they're in the uh, upper quadrant. Uh, and in this case, it's the left side, and that's what this is, is a left side cover. The upper uh, quadrant of the side cover. In other words, they're up in this area right here. And look at the photo not centered. 
I have seen some photos of restorations where the badge is put in the middle. I'm not sure how that happened. My guess is that as part of the painting process, they filled the original holes. The painter didn't uh, reference the original photos and logically, I think, it's, it would be intuitive to place them in the middle and they did so, but that is actually incorrect, I believe, according to everything that I've been able to research. One of the major restorers of these, these kind of motorcycles is Marble Motors and uh, all of their restorations show these badges in that upper quadrant. Like you can see there, and of course on the right side cover, you can see the same thing right there. So I'm going to take some pain here and pains to make sure I get this place correctly somewhere up in that vicinity right there. The blue tape is just temporary. So that as I'm working around, I don't accidentally drop a tool or something and scratch the paint. I did take that, uh, that, that painter's tape and I applied it on a smooth surface two or three times and peel it off to remove most of the uh, adhesive on the back of the tape. I didn't want it to be too aggressive on this fresh paint. And I will only leave it in place long enough to allow me to uh, do what I need to do here, which is basically spot these two holes. Now I made this little template, I'm going to move this out of the way here in case I drop something. I made this little template right here out of just a piece of heavy paper and I traced the outline of the emblem so that I can use this as the, the template for drilling. Let me show you what that looks like right there. And uh, I only need to make one of these because these emblems are the same for each side of the side cover so you don't need to make two of these. Placing this on the side cover it will go again referencing the photo it will go something like that that's approximate. You probably can't see it on this photo right here but that little detail right where my fingernail is pointing is this detail right here where my thumb is. Again you can see it right there. And that lines up pretty well with the right side of the emblem. So the right side of the emblem will go somewhere like that. The top edge, this top edge right here, seems to be parallel with this top edge of the side cover. You will notice that this detail right here, this ridge, is not parallel with the top of the side cover. It tapers like that. And I believe looking at the photos that the emblem is parallel with the very top edge of the side cover. Or in other words, this edge right here would be parallel with this edge right here. So the distance from the end here is approximately lining up with this detail right here. The distance from here to here, uh, I don't really have a reference for that. But looking at this, and I was playing around a little bit with my, my ruler, it appears to be about 25 millimeters from the top here to the top of the emblem. So once I get this settled in place right about here, that is side to side, I will come down approximately 25 millimeters from the top edge. I will do my best to eyeball it and square it up, something like that. And that's actually probably not too far off. And then I will spot those two holes with a pilot drill and then just drill through large enough holes so that I can fit this badge through. On the back side of the badge I will probably put something to protect the side cover or the clear coat from the abrasion of this badge. I don't know what I'm going to use yet but I don't want this just, Honda didn't do that of course, but this will just fit up against there and I don't want anything to work over time and abrade that finish. It's important also that you get the right side cover in the orientation of the badge correct. In other words, this is the left cover and I did do a test fit on the bike just to make sure and you can look at the shape and you can tell that you know these are the same so that you get the badge in the right place. Otherwise, if you miss Q, I would end up putting the badge over here and then that's a whole other problem. Once you drill the holes, you're committed of course and then it's a, that's a serious problem if you get them in the wrong spot. So that's my methodology I'm going to use. I thought I would share that with you. I thought people might be interested in seeing how I thought that through. Again, the tape is just to protect the finish. 
while uh, I can get everything positioned and then I can uh, spot and drill those two holes. The next time you see these, and I'm not going to take you through all of that, literally the work, I've, de I've described it for you from there on, it's pretty academic. The next time you see these side covers, in fact, all of these painted parts will be when they're installed on the bike, and likely at that point we'll be doing a final review of the project, and you can see it all complete. I think that's going to be it for the video today, folks. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.